What's up coders? So today we're going to be creating this app pretty much. We're going to be adding the countdown timers for both when the book is due and when the next book is revealed. We had a little timer example of a very simple way to implement the timer and that's going to be in a card link somewhere. But for this, let's get into the code. So actually before the code, I wanted to go over a little pseudocode. So we have our home.dart where we have our main screen right now. We're going to have a list of two string variables. Those two string variables are going to be these strings right here. This thing you see seven days, 22 hours, all that. And then, so then in an init state, we're going to start a countdown timer. And this countdown timer is going to call a function that returns the list of two string countdown values. We're going to store into here. And then that's just going to loop every second. All right, so now let's actually get to the code. So first things first, let's create our list of the two strings. The reason I'm using a list is because it's easier to return everything from one function instead of multiple functions. And when you do list with the number two right here, it makes it so it will, it has to be, a, it's a fixed list. So it will always be of size two. You can't add anymore or do anything. So then we could take this and where we have our do on, we could change it back to do in. And then we can change this to the I think time until the index zero. And if that is null, then we return loading. And that should show loading, right? And let's do the same thing for this. Actually, I'm gonna switch this up a bit. Let's do that. And then here, oh wait, we need to make this a row as well. Center, center that row. So now if we reload, you'll see this is over here and ours is right there. I realize it looks a little bit better. And then we could do time until index one. And if that's no, show loading again. All right, let's get back to up here. And I put in a little comment so we could understand it quickly or more easily if you're reading the code at least. So index zero is the time until book is due, which is the first one. And the second one is time until next book is revealed, which is this. So we'll never be confused. All right, next is the timer. We need this to periodically cycle every one second. I need Dart async for that as well. And then we can create a function called start timer. And in here, we're gonna need to get the timer, create a new instance of it, and then do periodic. So inside this periodic function, we're gonna need a duration. Like I said, our duration, we're gonna run every one second. And that every one second, whatever is in here is going to get executed. So what do we want? One, we get the timer value, which we don't need. Then inside we can set state and we can update the time until string uh, list with a function that we call here. So we don't have anything to call here yet. And the reason I put a comment here is because I want to add it in a different, different file. So you remember the utils folder that I have? is for stuff, that, stuff that's used throughout the app, basically utilities that are used throughout the app. And I think, I think that makes sense to put our time left functions in here. So I'm gonna name the file time left.dart and then class called our time left. 
and then inside we're going to want a function that returns a list of strings and we'll call it time left inside we'll pass a date time of when the book is due and then here we'll have another list of strings called return value and it's going to be a fixed list of two strings like I said and then we will return the return value alright so that's defined and over here we can actually make that function call so our time left dot time left and then we need when the book is due so we don't have that here right the easiest way to get it is using the provider which we already have so we have the current group here we could figure out a way to make it global but I don't know if it's necessary actually yeah let's just pass that into our start timer so our start timer will have to be called here and then inside we could pass it the current group and here we could do current group current group sure so when is the book due current group dot get current group dot current book due there we go remember this for this is a timestamp and we asked for to be passed in a date time so that's very simple we just do to date and all right I think that should be it for the home screen so now all that's left is to implement the time left function let's see if everything's working if it is then ret val zero we can set to value one and ret val one we should be able to set to anything else if we save it and if we reload it we get something so you don't see all that anything else because it doesn't wrap right but that's okay we can fix that later And this home function should be getting called periodically. So we put a breakpoint here, it should hit no matter what. And it doesn't. I think it might just be the IDE. Let me let me restart. So I rebuilt it and we, we put a breakpoint here. It should hit. And we can go and they'll hit again. And this timer doesn't stop, so it'll get queued up and that should get hit all the time. But there's one more thing we actually forgot for the timer. So we have an init state where we initialize this timer, but we need to make sure we dispose of it as well. So we need to have a dispose function. So basically if we leave the screen or anything, the timer doesn't keep running. I just do timer.cancel. So now we're ready to implement the rest of this function. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need to get we need to get the current time. So the way you get the current time is daytime.now. But we current time doesn't really do much for us. The thing we really need is the difference between the due date and the current time. So how you do that is using a duration get like time until do equals do dot difference and then daytime dot now so this is the due date and we get the difference from the due date and the current time and we store that in the time until do so now we have to break this down into hours well days hours minutes and seconds so I'll just copy paste that because it's kind of tedious writing it all out. 
So this is this is how you do it. Time until due, you can get it in days. And then you can get time until due in hours, but this gives you all of the hours. So let's say if it was two days in hours, it'd be 48 hours. So you need to make sure you subtract the amount of days you already have stored here. Minutes, same thing. If you have two days, it's gonna give you like thousands of minutes. You need to subtract your days, multiply by 24 hours, multiply by 60 minutes. So that'll give you all of that. And then also subtract the hours times 60 minutes. From the, so you subtract both of these values in minutes. And the second, same thing, but even more downwards, I guess. But there you should have all the things. So now if you want to check, you can just do days until to string. And if we save it, 75 days. Let's add a, another book so we know exactly what time we're looking for. So book name, Brave New World. This is one of my favorite books. If you want to check it out, I have a link in the description for it. It's the best book I ever read, probably. <laughs> and then let's change the date to, uh, let's change it to seven days from now. So next Saturday, change it to that. All right. And then let's create that book. Should say seven or eight days, I guess. Sure. And then we can do seconds even. And I'll just show the seconds. So 29, 25, and then I'll go until the minutes. So 59 minutes, when that went down to zero, that would have, minutes will go down to 58, right? Okay, so we have that pretty much figured out. So the return value, let's put it all together. We can have days until, put, give it two string, then add, we can have days, then slash n for a new line. And we can just keep doing that Add in the hours until to string plus hours backslash n. And the same thing for the rest of it. So there we go. All of that's working. But we, we don't have, let's not worry about the second one for now. Let's just keep the first one. So, so one last thing I need to check is now if we had zero days left or zero days left pretty much, we would still show zero days, two hours, 57 minutes. So I'm going to implement a little check. So if the days until is greater than zero, then you return this. Save it, we should see no change. Else if, so that means days until was not greater than zero there. We want to check if hours until is greater than zero. If, it's, if it is, that means days is zero and hours is not zero. So we want to return this. Then another else if. If our minutes until is greater than zero. That'll be the same thing if zero days and zero hours. We won't show the first two and we'll just show this last one. And copy paste that again. And remove this line. And then one more. If our seconds until is greater than zero, we want to remove this and we'll only show the seconds. And if all of that fails, there's got to be something wrong, something going on, because we should never have it all be zeros or be less than zero. So in that case, just return error. 
All right, we can test that out by going to Firebase as well. So here's our Firebase. We have April 26th, which is eight days and two hours away. We change this to April, what is it, 18th? Then update that, refresh it. We should see zero days. Well, we shouldn't even see the zero days. It just should be three values. Yeah, two hours, 55 minutes, seven seconds. So it looks like it works. Let's change that back to April 26th for the second part. So that's all great. We have the first value, which is value zero, for the do in working. But we need to do almost the same exact thing now for the return value for the second part, which is the one the next book is revealed. Everything's going to be exactly the same, except this line right here. Duration is going to be slightly different. So time until reveal, we'll do do dot subtract. So this subtract values from the due date will make it seven. So this means subtract seven days from the due date and then take the difference from the current time. Then everything else is pretty much, not pretty much copy, just copy it and change the variable's name changed. So let me do that real quick. All right, there we go. So everything's pretty much the same. We return two lists of strings. We give our countdown values. You'll see these countdown at the same rate. And now almost everything is the same except for the days. I don't know if we'll keep it that way or not, but for now, it makes sense, I think. And we can do a last quick double check. So let's change this to April 27th. What's the time right now? 5.26, so let's do 5.27. Update that, reload. Now we should see only a second show up if everything's right. Yeah, I didn't put the right date in, did I? There we go. So, counts down. So, perfect. We see an error when it goes to zero. In the next video or some upcoming video, instead of showing error, it will show a button so the next person can pick the next book. But yeah, that seems pretty much it. There's only a couple things left to do. Do that error, fix that, do the finished book, and then book club history. So maybe three more episodes, and then we'll actually upload this app to the Play Store and the iOS Store. So okay, thanks for watching. This code will be on GitHub like always. If you have any questions or anything, leave it in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.